And finally, this evening, Carrie Saldo is back with our arts report. This week, uh, a, a blending of fashion design and art. Is that right? Yeah, it, there's a Boulder-based company called The Coterie. And we did a story about them because what they found was this online design tool that they developed for people to use as a way to create tank tops and t-shirts and leggings. Um, they found that artists were actually making use of the technology. The coterie is a French word that you borrowed and sort of Americanized the spelling of. And I think it's very interesting that you picked that word because it references like a small, like a niche something. The shoppers that are buying the designs are entering a small group of people, a club essentially. They're buying into a story um, that the designer has created for them. And the co-founders of the Coterie are finding that story is a bit different than they initially intended. Instead of attracting fashion designers, many people using their site are first and foremost visual artists. Did you ever think that one of your paintings would become a piece of clothing? I've used my art on clothing previously. However, as an artist, I'm busy and occupied already too. So the idea of producing clothing would be um, harrowing. So um, working with the Coterie allows me to use my work, do what I do best, um, be a designer and an artist, and they take care of everything else. There are a lot of moving parts to this business. Not a lot of people think about t-shirts as being something that's hard to make. And unless you're in the industry and know that, you just think t-shirts are like the simplest thing in the world. There's a lot that goes on behind the scenes before you can slip into any garment. But Char and Trish saw an opportunity, simplify the design process. That's why they launched the Coterie. Talk about the actual nuts and bolts of the design process. We've built a browser-based design tool where designers can select a pattern, choose their fabrics for every panel of the garment, select Pantone colors to dye it, upload their own original artwork to sublimate or screen print, and once they're satisfied with the design, then they can set a retail price and submit it and launch their campaign, essentially. What do you think of when you think of t-shirts? You probably have a thousand of them. They're inexpensive. A lot of them in the rag bag, but I was, certainly would not put any of those in there. They're all gorgeous. And, and that's one of the things that's really important to the Coterie is the quality. The pieces are made in the United States and they wanted to have that be very apparent. And that's something that the artists who are using it, you know, connect with is that quality. It's also fascinating to me that there is a tool like this that you can, you cut out a lot of things you would have to do if you were starting up yourself as a designer. Absolutely. I mean, you're thinking about sourcing fabric, finding patterns, finding distribution. There are lots of moving parts to, to a simple t-shirt. You know, we look at it and think very easy, but there are so many moving parts and the Coterie really helps people to get to the bottom of this. One other thing that they said I thought was fantastic, they regard these pieces as limited run pieces of wearable art. Very nice, that's really wearable beautiful. art, who could not like that? I, I guess the practical part of me wonders, can you wash them? <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then it says here that you took part in a love affair last night. I did, uh, not quite as salacious as it might sound. It was something organized by City Build Denver, and they brought together seven different speakers centered around this topic. Why do you love Denver? What's your love affair with Denver? And what does that have to do with art? <laughs> <laughs> Good question, Cynthia. One of the points that these speakers were making, and there were seven speakers, is that art isn't something that's superfluous. It's not an afterthought for them. It is something that's integral to the social fabric of Denver and the continuation of its growth and uh, it becoming or continuing to become a vibrant city. Which we see in some of the little neighborhoods around Denver. Who was speaking at the event? Well, speaking of those little neighborhoods, Mickey Zeppelin was one of the speakers and he is involved in the development of Rhino, the River North District in Denver. And something that he said that Susan Wick, his, his collaborator, often says is art is not what's on the wall, it's what changes reality. And so for Mickey, what that means is, you know, developments like the source or taxi, places that we gather, we live, we create new work, art, et cetera. And so for him, art is, goes right in line with all of the things that he's doing here in Denver. It was all about creativity, right? I mean, among all of the speakers. Uh, that, that was sort of the underlying thread. You know, you, we had someone who was tied to the Underground Music Showcase, Wonderbound, which we'll talk about in a minute, uh, gibberish clothing design. So it really covered a wide, a wide swath. And the idea being for those who were there to listen last night or hear about it after the fact, to inspire their creativity moving forward.
Well, speaking of Wonderbound, I, this sounds really great, and unfortunately we can't show the dance. We'll show you some pictures, but Wonderbound has a new dance called Boomtown. They do, and it is loosely based on Denver, and they went back through Denver history and used that to inspire the work. And it's not necessarily a narrative like Sleeping Beauty or Swan Lake or something like that, but there is a loose storyline, sort of boy meets girl, chases her to the big city. But one of the things that I really think is interesting is they pulled from characters actual characters and one that's near and dear to our heart would probably be Chase Bancroft, who is a combination of two reporters, Mary Chase and Caroline Bancroft. Real reporters from, from Denver. Denver. And uh, and founders of the Denver Women's Press Club, as we know. Well, this is great. Now tell me about uh, the Chimney Choir. So that uh, they, as they often do, Wonderbound collaborated with another group, the Chimney Choir, and they made 25 new songs for this dance work, which opens on April 17th.